guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Reading Bear, and I hope you are ready for some more stories. And today, we will take a look at some new p o r r y v e n g e content. If you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comment. And now, let's dive right into the stories. First one is titled. The universe inflicted its own petty revenge on a tow truck driver for me. This story takes place about seven to eight years ago. For a time when I was in my early 20s, I spent just about all hard-earned money building up my car at the time. It was a 90 Eagle Talon TSI AWD. I had bought the car bone stock with about 72k miles on it two years prior to this story. It didn't look like much, but up until this point, I had paid no one to work on it and done all the work on the car myself, with the help of some other local enthusiasts. It was my pride and joy, and this was the first time I was actually taking the car somewhere to have work performed for me. I had been planning on having a trans built for the car for a while. It's one of the known weak points on those cars. I hadn't been quite ready to do so, but the clutch fork managed to work its way off the pivot ball, and the trans had to get dropped in order to remedy the problem. It seemed silly to do it twice, so I planned on taking it about an hour, an hour fifteen away to a shop that specialized in my car and had come highly recommended. It should be noted I had already started getting the car ready for its major surgery, drained fluids, pulled parts that would have been in the way, etc. I call AAA to get a tow truck to come pick my car, and I up for the trip. My girlfriend at the time was going to follow us out there so I could get home again afterwards. I got a grumpy old sob for a tow truck driver. He spent the entire trip busting my balls about dumping money into anything that didn't have eight cylinders under the hood, all but calling me a liar when I explained all the records these cars, motors have set over the years, and generally drove like a douchebag. He was running yellow lights, knowing my girlfriend was following along and had no clue where we were going. Gave me a hard time about pulling over to wait for her. Bitched about the fact that I had to have my car taken to a shop so far away and was doing about 75 on a 45 miles per hour back road while my car bounced back and forth on the bed of the truck. After the hour or so, we finally arrived after dark around 7 p.m. After the shop had closed, but the owner waited around as he knew I was coming, and now the universe steps in. After my car has been unloaded and I'm still outside talking with the shop owner as to what's going to be done on my car, the tow truck driver was up on his bed putting the chains back in place and what not, getting ready for his long trek home. He still had the bed up on an angle with one end touching the ground. Apparently, I hadn't completely drained all the antifreeze out of the car when was prepping the car, as some had leaked onto the tow truck bed. Suddenly, the shop owner and I both hear the tow truck driver scream, "Son of a bitch!" Followed by a loud thud. As we turn around, we see him trying to pick himself up off the truck bed, his pants soaked from the antifreeze. Followed by him attempting to berate me about making sure the fluids weren't leaking from a car before the tow truck comes. Both my girlfriend and I had a wonderful laugh at his expense, and he continued to grumble until he got in his truck and left. The shop owner also had a good laugh after I explained the situation to him. Last one is titled "Refuse to pay sixty dollars to fix my roof." Okay, I'll close your building site down and cost you hundreds of thousands of dollars. Characters in this story: my friend, who I will call Brian. Bullying demolition man, we will call Keith. Greedy property developer, we will call Karen. And the insurance assessor. This tale of this nuclear revenge happened a while back and is a work in progress. It is too good not to tell, and I will try and keep you updated down the track. Brian's neighbor is a typical greedy career landlord that left their rental house in disrepair. The poor tenant was living in the cold house, raw sewerage leaking onto the lawn, and holes in the house that you could see light coming out of the house. After multiple requests from Brian, Karen refused to get any repairs done. When the state government introduced new laws about ensuring landlords are insulating their rental properties, instead doing this to the house, Karen kicked their tenant out and left the house vacant for five years. The old house deteriorated so much more during this time, with rats infesting the house and invading other houses nearby. 
Brian and his wife with their limited funds were able to get sufficient lending from the bank and offered to buy the house and do it up themselves to improve the neighborhood or rent it out as there is a massive shortage of rental properties in our local county. Greedy Karen did not want to sell, nor did she want to spend a cent on the house to remedy the rodent problem. She also did not care about the effect the house was having on aesthetics of the street. It is important to know that Karen and her wealthy family have over a hundred rental properties and due to lax tax laws in this region, they do not pay a cent and can get tax write-offs when their properties deteriorate then can claim on this as a loss. Long story short, some of them appear to be leeches on our society and are one of the reasons property prices are so high and rent prices are skyrocketing in our area. Her husband is also the chairman of the state's landlords association an association that he often fronts the media for, defending landlords and putting a good media spin on them when there is negative press. Fast forward five years and Brian finds out the house is going to be demolished to make way for some new houses to go in on the small section. That's good news at least, though Brian and his wife were anxious about how smoothly the demolition would go due to the fact the houses are quite close to each other. This is important for later, Prior to demolition the company doing it had to get samples from all sides of the house to check for asbestos. Either Karen made it difficult for the company to get down the side bordering Brian's house or they simply were too lazy but only samples from three sides not four were taken. Demolition day came around and Brian was concerned that no safety barriers had been put up to protect his house from falling bricks of the chimney nor was there anything from stopping dust and debris going all over his new deck and porch area. Later that day, Brian had the pleasure of meeting Keith. Keith is the demolition company manager that is well known around the district for only caring about money and has little regard for people or property. Keith was doing the demolition himself today simply with a digger. Brian returned home during his break at work to check the progress of the demolition and found the demolition was already complete after only an hour or so, the demolished house was in a pile. He climbed up on his roof and to his disbelief found hundreds of bricks had fallen onto his roof causing damage though he was lucky none had fallen through into the house. Brian phoned up demolition man Keith to ask about what went wrong. Keith initially played down the damage despite there being 200 bricks laying on Brian's roof. Even with the damage done, no apology and the rude attitude of Keith, Brian kept his cool. Since I did a little bit of roofing when I was younger, I can fix up the roof if you just get me four new sheets of roofing iron and we will call it even. Don't worry about paying for paint. I can sort that out when I paint the whole roof after the fall. Brian's roof was not in the best of shape but it was in much worse shape after having bricks dumped on it leaving massive dents and chipping the paint. This is the moment that a simple decision on Keith's part would screw him and the landlord big time. Not happening pal, your roof is ducked anyway, I'll get you a sheet of second-hand roofing iron from my yard to repair the damage on roof and I can come and hose off the dust off your deck in dog kennel. Cue the nuclear revenge. The revenge was not intentionally nuclear but Brian had a dilemma that his roof was damaged and he needed it repaired, there was rain and snow forecast later in the week and he shouldn't be out of pocket having to buy new materials to fix his own roof up to a good standard. Brian is normally calm and relaxed man but this situation and the way he and his property were treated sparked an anger that I have never seen before. Brian got in contact with his insurance company and due to the issue involving a roof a building assessor arrived that day to assess the claim. The assessor would then be able to seek damages from the landlord or demolition company if he found them to be at fault. Brian also reported the demolition company to the local health and safety authorities due to their lack of safety precautions used when doing the demolition. The assessor got onto the roof with Brian and was mortified to hear how Keith had acted in such disregard with the damage done to the roof and his lack of an apology for any wrongdoing got the assessor mad. He then looked more concerned, and bent down and picked up some grey fibrous material. Luckily thanks to Covid we already have masks on Brian, this here looks like it is asbestos. I don't know how they got the sign off to get this house knocked down in this manner. You don't know at the time of being exposed to this stuff, but if you breath in these fibers it can cause serious diseases later on in life including lung cancer. 
I'll get this sent off to the lab for testing and we'll be in touch. Fast forward another day and Brian was contacted by his insurance company. It turns out the side of the house that wasn't tested was clad in asbestos. Not just any bad asbestos, the worst possible type you can get. Insurance will be seeking damages to replace Brian's whole roof not just the damaged part. The cost of replacement is likely to be around $20,000 USD. This is the cheap part. The demolition site has been shut down by local authorities and there needs to be a massive decontamination of the area. This involves having to remove at least half a meter of top soil on surrounding properties, test the soil and remove more if there is asbestos still found. Areas with decks need to potentially have these removed so soil can be evacuated out underneath. The cost for this cleanup will likely be in the hundreds of thousands of dollars but who will pay for this is unknown at this stage. Whether it is Keith or Karen's insurance or them personally, time will tell. In regards to Brian, his family and their dog potentially being exposed to the asbestos, that is another battle for them to fight and I will keep you updated. Update 1. I have just been on the phone to Brian for half an hour. His workplace was very sympathetic and paid for him to have two days off trying to sort things out. This is in complete contrast to Karen and Keith who are yet to apologize and have made life difficult for Brian and his family. Due to the neighboring property being closed off for entry due to the health and safety investigation going on it means Brian cannot even get scaffolding on his roof yet to fix the roof. Brian is worried now that the landlord is going to try making his life hell. She is also a lawyer apparently. Karen was the person that offered the old roofing iron apparently not Keith. She spoke to her husband who said that because the bricks dinted the roof it means it must have been rusty and old so doesn't need new iron put on. Keith did however go nuts at Brian for getting insurance involved and also the health and safety investigation unit who are currently doing the investigation. In regards to Brian and family still living in the house. According to the investigator the risk is negligible and the problems will arise when the debris are removed from the section. This will require a large tent etc. However the wind has been strong last few days and I feel risk is still high living next door to uncovered broken asbestos cladding that is not being kept damp. Brian asked the investigation office person by phone about what to do about his dog and if they needed vet checkup etc. They were one meter away from the fence which is about a foot from the asbestos when it was broken up. They responded saying, do you think your dog will live more than 20 years? If not I probably wouldn't worry. Brian is also thinking the landlord is probably scheming revenge of her own. Brian paid for a new fence himself a few years back to border Karen's rental as when he moved in the old fence was half falling down, she refused to pay half despite this being law. He reckons because the fence is approximately 10 centimeters too high she will ask him to cut the height down at his own cost so it is in perfect position for her new houses that are to be built. Brian's plan is that he will pull the nice expensive fence down entirely and put 600 mm high chicken wire mesh up as this is all that is required by law and there is nothing she can do about it legally as he paid for and built the fence. I will continue to keep you all updated. Also as I know the local newspaper editor I have offered to go with Brian to discuss this story with them once the investigation is completed if Karen tries to make life difficult and also expose Keith for his dirty practices. Keith's company has just been awarded a multi-million dollar contract for demolition of an old car factory and this would raise some eyebrows. Update 2. A very small update but not great news. I feel this story as many have suggested will not conclude in a warm fuzzy feeling of ultimate revenge as things progress. Firstly Brian informed me a fence has gone up around the exposed parts of neighboring property. This is only to stop people from public going over to debris pile and scavenging etc then exposing themselves to the broken asbestos cladding. Brian also needed to take two full days off work when this happened to try sort out all the situation and reduce stress on his wife. Talking with all parties involved. So he was down two days wages coming up to Xmas but his kind boss has paid him special leave for taking them off. 
the insurance company after further clarification will be only paying out for one quarter of roof and flashings. Brian will have to find funds to pay for the rest. This section of roof is however the most expensive as it encompasses a large complex parapet gutter, roofing iron and flashings. Cost? $8,000 USD. I hope I can provide something more substantial in a later update when there has been more action. Update 3. Wish this update was actually something to update you on but alas it is merely to say due to the Xmas break etc nothing has progressed. Brian cannot get his roof fixed until the area beside his house is decontaminated so the scaffolding can then go up. Update 4. Another downer of an update. Brian is being paid $8,000 towards his roof. The landlord, contractor got away with not needing a huge area cleanup and convinced local authorities that the building site would be sufficient for decontamination as the testers could not find samples over the fences of surrounding houses. All top soil on old section was removed and replaced. A new house has been quickly built by landlord's builder. The house looks as cheap as they come. A kitsit house and looks out of place. Sort of like a house you could load onto a truck and move if needed in future. Brian still hasn't had his roof fixed yet as he needs to save money to afford to pay for whole roof. Update 5. Brian tells me the demolition company are taking his insurance company to court on the amount they have to pay for roof. The end. Thanks for listening.